Good evening Plushy Haven. For our story time tonight we are going to be accompanied by Ozzy, Timothy Bear, Chloe, Burke, <laughs> Pumpkin and Hazel. And we're going to be reading from Sleep Tight Little One, a collection of stories for bedtime. I'm just going to get started just before uh, Stuart gets back in. yeah it's uh oh it's not by marks and spencers the stories are by different people so i'll just go over the credits for now so we've got little bear's special wish which we're going to read first by Gillian lobel and gabby henson and um chloe is representing the little bear and then ozzy is of course representing the bunny and burke back here is representing a frog that you meet a little bit later in that story then we've got Newton by Rory Tiger, and uh, Timothy Bear is the closest I could find to represent that one. He's actually my first uh, plush as a kid, and um, yeah, <laughs> I've still got him. He's not a replica, he is the legit thing. And then we've got Have You Got My Purr by Judy West and Tim Warns, and we, I decided Pumpkin was the closest because I can't find my Caligo cat because he's kind of got like markings and stuff and you know, it's Halloween season so we're not getting into spooky books at the minute but I figured it'd be nice to have him represent and then we got Goodnight Little Hair uh, by Sheridan Kane and Sally Percy and this will all be on the same video but we've got Hazel here who I know is a rabbit from Watership Down but is the closest hair looking and I always thought they were a hair I'm not gonna lie when I first watched it <laughs> but yeah so um in a second we're gonna get right into this one Little Bear's Special Wish. Alright guys, so Stuart is back. I am here in bed ready for... I'm ready for the story time. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so we've kind I'm of... Just holding on, I'm holding on to the uh, actors for their... The actors, yeah. Their cue. So obviously, Chloe, it's your big moment now. <laughs> Ozzy and Burke, let's go. Look, there's the frog. <laughs> okay, so Little Bear's Wish. Let's get it Where done. Did we call the frog? I named him seconds ago. You weren't supposed to ask. Oh, sorry. I he was, looks like a Burke. I was going to call from him... From Trapdoor, you I know. Can't remember, <laughs> I can't remember the name of the frog from uh, uh, the We Free Men. But... We Free Men go ribbity rib. No. Ribbity no, the <laughs> witch has up. a pet frog, and I can't remember his um, name, but he looks like... I don't know. He'd be that kind of Could have called him Rocket from uh, the Thimbles, was it? I don't know about the Thimbles. Anyway. Story time, sorry. I'm that's you. Okay. The sun was still in bed when little brown bear crept out into the shadowy woods. I wish, <laughs> I wish, <laughs> he whispered. Are you okay being a he in this one? Yeah, not fussed. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Bears have no, no probs. It's all good. Um, you're up early, little brown bear, called Lippity. Rabbit, what are you wishing for? I mean, Ozzy's asleep now, so we'll just keep going. <laughs> <laughs> all right actors have to stay quiet this is this is important for story time <laughs> uh, it's my mummy's birthday said little brown bear and i wish i could find the most special present in all the world for her i'll help you said lippity rabbit so off they went along the winding path little pools of moonlight danced around their feet and there they are come on off the book book In the middle of the woods was a big rock. Little brown bear sat down for a moment to think. High above him glittered a star, so big and bright he could almost touch it. I know, I could give my mummy a star, he said. That would be a very special present. Little brown bear gave a little jump, but he could not reach the star. <laughs> he gave a very big jump, but still he could not reach the star. Then little brown bear had an idea. I know, he said, if we climb to the very top of the hill, then we'll be able to reach the stars. From the top of the hill, the stars looked even brighter and much nearer too. Little brown bear stretched up on his tiptoes, but the stars were still too far away. Then little brown bear had a very good idea indeed. He's trying to reach it. <clears throat> Not quite, little bear. I know, he said, we must build a big, big tower to the stars. I'll help you, said Lippity Rabbit. They are building away. Together they piled the biggest stones they could find, one on top of the other. Then they stepped back and looked. A stone stairway stretched to the stars. 
Now I shall reach a star for my mummy, said Little Brown Bear happily. He climbed right to the top and stretched out a paw. But still, he couldn't reach the stars. He's just still a little way off, in he? As an astrologist, mm -hmm. this, well, no, not astrology, astronomy. Yeah. This, this book makes me angry. <laughs> <laughs> it's for babies. This book makes me so angry. It's so sweet. <laughs> it is. Have you ever read this one? No. Well, then just wait. You might not necessarily get a star, well, I, I but mean... you might realise it. It's it's a learning Unless curve. Unless he builds a rocket ship. <laughs> anyway, I know, called Lippity Rabbit, if I climb on your shoulders, then I can knock a star down with my long, loppy ears. Lippity Rabbit scrambled onto Little Brown Bear's shoulders. He stretched up his long, loppy ears. He waggled them furiously. Be careful, Lippity, called Little Brown Bear. You're making me wobble. <laughs> <laughs> He's having a flippity floppity up there. Suddenly, Little Brown Bear felt something tapping his foot. Can I help you? croaked a frog. Why, yes, very small frog, said Little Brown Bear. Are you any good at jumping? Very small frog puffed out his chest. Just watch me, he said. High into the air he flew and landed right between Lippity Rabbit's long, loppy ears. He's so cute and small. <laughs> Can you reach the brightest star from there? Asked Little Brown Bear. No problem, shouted Very Small Frog. He took a mighty breath. Look out, stars, here I come, he shouted. Uh, yep. <laughs> and it... Well done, Burke, you tried. <laughs> no, he's really going for it. Very Small Frog gave a great push with his strong back legs. Up, up, up he sailed. Lippity Rabbit's long, loppy ears twirled round and round. Help! he shouted. Somebody save me! Backwards and forwards he swayed, and backwards and forwards swayed Little Brown Bear. With a mighty crash, the stone tower toppled to the ground, and down and down tumbled Lippity Rabbit and Little Brown Bear. Whoa! Big old bumps. I hope you're appreciating the camera jostles. <laughs> Anyone who's got uh, motion sickness. I can't breathe, Lippity, gasped Little Brown Bear. You're sitting right on my nose. And very small frogs sailed down from the stars and landed on Lippity Rabbit's head. I'm sorry, little brown bear, he said. I just jumped right over the moon, but I still couldn't reach the stars. Little brown bear sat up carefully. His nose was scratched and his head hurt. Now my special wish shall never come true, he said. I shall never find a star for my mummy. Don't be sad, little brown bear, said Lippity Rabbit. And he gave him a big hug. A tear ran down Little Brown Bear's nose and splashed into a tiny pool at his feet. Oh, it's so sad that it's crying. I'm not going to cry. As he rubbed his eyes, Little Brown Bear saw something that danced and sparkled in the shining water. Surely it was his star. Little Brown Bear jumped up with excitement. Now I know what to do, he cried. He's so sparkly. Off he ran down the hillside. Wait for us, cried Liberty Rabbit and Very Small Frog. <laughs> it looks like he's running if you, if you angle it right. Look, he's looking in a pool. It's very, very pretty. Oh, look at the sparkles, guys. Through the ferny woods they ran over the silver meadows until they reached the stream. For a long time they hunted along the sandy shore until Little Brown Bear found just what he was looking for. And carefully, carefully, he carried it all the way home. <laughs> Happy birthday, mummy, he cried. Into his mother's lap he placed a pearly shell that shone like a rainbow. There in the heart of the shell a tiny pool of water quivered. And in that pool a very special star shimmered and shook. The star that had made a little bear's birthday wish come true. Liberty Rabbit and Very Small Frog helped me find the shell. But I caught the star all by myself, said Little Brown Bear proudly. Mother Bear knelt down and gave him a big hug. Thank you all very much, she said. This is a very special birthday present indeed. Aww. It's a shimmery pool. So pretty. Oh, The end. <laughs> yeah, the end. Very lovely. Right, on we go, guys. So you guys need to off pop, off your poppity pop. You've done your bit. We now want Timothy Bear. As da, 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 da. He's, he's too tired, but you sit and stay. Good boy. <laughs> <laughs> so, Newton, here we go. <clears throat> creak, creak, creak. <laughs> Newton woke up suddenly. There was a funny noise somewhere in the room. It was me fine. 
Shut up. <laughs> Don't be frightened, he told Waffle. There's always an explanation for everything. He gave each of his toys a special cuddle so they wouldn't be scared. Creak, 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 went the noise again. I feel like you should just mess around with the door. This is very embarrassing for me. No, I don't think we're committing. All right. Newton got out of bed and turned on the light. He walked across the room. See toys, he says. There's nothing to be frightened of. It's only the wardrobe door. Who's opening it? Newton went back to bed again. Flap, flap, flap. What was that? Was it a ghost? Once more, Newton got out of bed. He wasn't really scared, but he took his bravest toy, Snappy, just in case he tiptoed quietly very quietly towards the noise. Flap, flap, flap. It went again. Of course, said Newton. Flap, flap, flap. Oh, just what I thought. It was his bedroom curtains flapping in the breeze. I'll soon sort those out, said Newton. Slam. You were very brave, Snappy, he said as he closed the window. Splish, splash, splish. Another noise? Newton looked outside. It wasn't raining. Besides, the noise wasn't coming from outside. Nor was it coming from his bedroom. What was it? Stay right there, you two, said Newton, while I look around. He wasn't the teeniest bit afraid. He was just talking, taking Snappy with him for company. Newton crept down the corridor. It was very spooky, especially in the dark corners. Splish, splash, splish, went the noise. Very, very quietly, Newton opened the bathroom door. Hello, of course, we knew it. It was the bathroom tap, didn't we, Snappy, said Newton. Newton turned off the tap and tiptoed back down the corridor. Shh, he said to Snappy, just in case something in the dark corners sprang out at them. I think he's a little bit scared. Before he got into bed, Newton pulled back the curtains just to check. It was very, very quiet outside. No more funny noises, said Newton. You can go to sleep now, he told all his toys. Rumble, rumble, rumble. Oh no, cried Newton. What's that? Newton listened very hard. Not a sound. He was just beginning to think. He hadn't heard anything at all when rumble, rumble, rumble. Yeah, you did. There it was again. Newton peered under his bed. Nothing there at all, except for an old sweet he'd forgotten about. Don't worry, said Newton. We'll soon find out what it is. Rumble! Newton stood very still. Rumble! Newton listened very hard. Rumble! went the noise, and suddenly Newton knew exactly what it was. Newton padded downstairs and into the kitchen. He helped himself to a large glass of milk and two thick slices of bread and honey, and now he could hear no rumble, rumble, rumble at all, because... the rumbling had been his empty tummy. Newton went upstairs again and told his toys about his rumbling tummy. There's always an explanation for everything, said Newton, as he climbed back into bed. Good night, everyone. I think whoever had this book before us was very upset that they couldn't find the noise that explained why they were scared. Because <laughs> they ripped this page. They're <laughs> very cross at Newton. Sleep tight. Snore, 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 went <laughs> Newton. Newton! Oh my god, I can't sleep, it's so loud. Oh, that's so cute. Look. All right, off you go, Timothy Bear. It's someone else's time to shine now. <laughs> Couldn't even see him do that. Yeah, Come on, pumpkin. Boink. Away we go. Have you got my purr? Did you make noise? Purr, purr. Cat? Oh, I don't think so, no. Oh, mummy, mummy. What's the matter, little kitten? Why are you crying? Oh, mummy, mummy, I've lost my purr. You'll find your purr, little kitten. Just wait and see. Oh, dog, dog, have you got my purr? Woof, woof, said dog, licking his bone. I haven't got your purr, little kitten. This is my woof. Why don't you ask cow? You gotta think of a voice for all of these guys. <laughs> Shush. Oh, cow, cow, have you got my moo? Moo, moo, said That's cow, flicking says. flies with her ears. You got the words wrong. It says moo. The cow isn't asking for the moo. Moo Moo said cow. You said how cow cow have you got my moo? Oh, have you got my purr? Okay. <laughs> oh my god. I didn't even notice. <laughs> Redo. <laughs> I haven't got your purr, little kitten. This is my moo. Why don't you ask pig? <laughs> you gotta do that again. <laughs> oh pig, pig, have you got my purr? Oik oik, said pig, snuffling in the straw. I haven't got your purr, little kitten. 
This is my oink. Why don't you ask Duck? Is Duck hiding somewhere? Yes, they're always hiding somewhere. Oh, Duck, Duck, have you got my purr? <coughs> said Duck, splashing in the water. I haven't got your purr, little kitten. This is my quack. Why don't you ask Mouse? Where is Mouse, anyway? Where do you think Mouse Ta-da! I don't know. Oh, come on, focus. Oh, oh, Mouse, Mouse, have you got my purr? said Mouse, nibbling cheese in the barn. I haven't got your purr, little kitten. This is my squeak. Why don't you ask sheep? Oh, my throat. <laughs> <laughs> there we go, there's sheep. Let's get the sheep. Oh, sheep, sheep, have you got my purr? Bah, bah, said sheep, munching grass in the field. I haven't got your purr, little kitten. This is my ba. Why don't you ask wise old owl? Well done, well done. Wise old owl, have you got my purr? Why are you American? Who, <laughs> said the wise old owl, blinking its round, round eyes. <laughs> I haven't got your purr, little kitten. This is my hoot. Why don't you go back and ask your mother? <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, mommy, mommy, wailed little kitten. Nobody's got my purr. Dog hasn't got it. He's got woof. Cow hasn't got it, she got moo. Pig hasn't got it, she got an oink. Duck hasn't got it, she got a quack. Mouse hasn't got it, he's got a squeak. And sheep hasn't got it, she got a ba. Wise old owl hasn't got it, he got a hoot. Oh, mommy, mommy, I've lost my purr. Why do you sound like some <laughs> some gangster or something? She ain't got my purr, she got an oink. She got an oink, she got all that oink you up in like here. like a gossip girl or something. <laughs> You haven't lost your purr, little kitten. Come here and I'll explain. Nobody got your purr. Your purr is inside you when you're happy. Listen, little kitten, listen. <laughs> I'm not going to start purring for this book. Yeah, you are. My purr! Oh, mommy, I found my purr. It was here all the time. So little kitten curled up. <clears throat> so little kitten curled up and purred and purred and purred. You sound like Apple Bloom. There you go. ASMR, ASMR. I can purr, guys, if you didn't know. <laughs> oh, it's so cute. I wasn't trying to put on any particular accent, so please do not you get wound offended. You sounding like Apple Bloom. <laughs> Buy some apples in my purr. <laughs> Buy some apples, I'll give you my purr. <laughs> right, I need um Hazel now. <laughs> Being assaulted by Ta -da! Hello. Bank, 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 bank. Look at me. <laughs> it's weird how his hands are on his <laughs> hips like that. It's like he's doing a dance move. Uh -huh. This is my... I'm not going to swear, actually, in this. This is my jam. This is my jam. Anyway, good night, little hair. Let's get going, because this is a long video. By the pale light of the moon, Mother Hare sat watching Little Hare. He lay with eyes tight shut. For his blanket he had the sky, and the soft hay formed his bed. Good night, yeah. Little Hare, she whispered. Sky as a blanket would be very cold. Shh, don't ruin this book for me. Mole trundled by and almost toppled over Little Hare. Mother Hare, he said, cannot leave your baby there. It isn't safe, for the farmer cuts the hay at dawn. But what can I do? asked Mother Hare. Where can little hare sleep? You should dig a hole, big and deep, said Mole. That's where your little hare baby should sleep. Aww. Get your ears out of the way. <laughs> so Mother Hare began to dig. She scraped and scraped at the soft brown earth until the hole was big and deep. Then she carried little hare to his new bed. But little hare did not like it. Mama, he cried, it's so dark and I'm afraid. Man up. <laughs> <laughs> Badger came bumbling along and heard Little Hare's cries. Mother Hare, he said, you cannot leave your baby there. It isn't safe. Weasel's hunting through hole and burrow, and he will soon find Little Hare. But what can I do? asked Mother Hare. Where can Little Hare sleep? You should cover him in a bed of leaves. That will fool Weasel, said Badger. Really? Also, it will be seasoning for garnish. <laughs> <laughs> so Mother Hare hurried and she scurried. She formed the leaves into a soft round pile, then she carried Little Hare to his new bed. But Little Hare did not like it. Mama, he cried, I'm so afraid. I don't like the crinkly, crackly noises my new bed makes. 
Blackbird was up early, pecking among the leaves for grubs when he heard Little Hare's cries. Was it a he? Yeah. Mother Hare, he said, you cannot leave your baby there. It isn't safe. Fox's nose is sharp and he will soon sniff out Little Hare. But what can I do? asked Mother Hare. Where can Little Hare sleep? What you need is a nest up high, said Blackbird. Fox will never reach him there. Dun, 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 dun. So Mother Hare leapt up onto the branch of a tree and placed Little Hare in an empty bird's nest. But Little Hare did not like it. Mama, he cried, looking down. I'm so afraid. It's high up here and I might fall out. Oh dear. It's not very good. It's not doing very well. Boy, Mother Hare carried Little Hare down again. She did not know what to do. Oh dear, she sobbed. How can I find a bed that's safe for Little Hare? Owl was watching Mother Hare and Little Hare from his perch. Don't be sad, said Owl. Don't you remember when you were young and how your mother kept you safe? Mm. She's having a think. Mother Hare remembered the sky was her blanket. She remembered the soft golden hay that was her bed. She remembered how, from dusk to dawn, her mother had watched her over her. The sun was just rising. Mother Hare looked towards the fields that was her home, and her eyes became bright. The farmer had come early, and the hay was cut. It was quite safe there now. Yay! Mother Hare carried Little Hare yep. back to his old bed and <laughs> laid him gently down. Hazel, we're not finished. Now we'll look at the pictures. <laughs> Mama, said Little Hare, I'm not afraid now. This is my own bed and I like it. Good night, Little Hare. Dun, 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 dun. This, this, this. Go to bed as soon as the sun comes Night, up. night, guys. <laughs> Good night. Well, I hope you enjoyed. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>